Hello, I'm Dr. Ruth Roberts, your pet's ally. I hope you are well, and I've got a bunch of questions to answer for you today, and hopefully you've got some questions uh, for me as well while we're broadcasting live today. Finally back in good internet service to make this possible. So let's see, let me find this little page of tricks here. Um, so we've... If, again, if you don't know how to ask a question, the quickest way is to message me. And uh, that way we'll, we'll send you a little form. You'll fill out your name, your email address, and we'll send you an email back letting you know you've, we've gotten your question. And then the, each week we'll get them answered for you, whether that's live like today or... Um, or whether it's uh, through a pre-recorded video, if the uh, uh, internet gods are not playing nice with me. So, hope... Hope this is actually broadcasting. I'm not 100% sure that it is. Uh, so, let's just double check this. Good. So it looks like we are alive. Okay, goody. It's I'm never quite sure sometimes. <laughs> so thanks for, uh, everybody can hear this okay? Great. So off to the races. Uh, so again, bunch of questions today. So the first one is from Susan Balga, and she's got a dog named Toby who's got chronic soft stools and diarrhea and also really picky about eating. And Susan, this is, if you know, if you've been to the vet and done a bunch of testing as far as make sure, making sure that there's no uh, infectious organism causing um, uh, the diarrhea, then great. And then frankly, this is where doing something like a rotation and elimination diet really does a great thing. And the goal is, is that A, uh, if your pup is really picky, um, then it's eating something different every day. And so that tends to uh, help keep them from being picky. And then also the, your pet's immune system doesn't see the same food every day, which is awesome. So Susan, I hope that's helpful. Um, you know, we're, we've got a ton of holistic health protocols available for you. And if you go over to um, the website uh, it, and do uh, sign up for our free members area, then you can get access to them really quickly. Um, so, and, that, and I will talk a little bit more about that today as well. Um, so, hope that's helpful. And the next question I had was from Maureen Bonner. And she's got a kitty named Miss Moo, who's a feral rescue kitty who has really high anxiety and is always on alert. Um, she was chased by doggies for the first six with weeks of her life. And so she's, um, Maureen's saying she kind of has PTSD as a result of that. And that seems reasonable. Um, so, Maureen, I think this is where you want to make sure that you are uh, feeding a cat appropriate diet and what we think is correct and what cats actually agree to can be a totally different thing. Um, so ideally what you would feed is a keto type diet and that will help with brain function. And then also again check out the anxiety protocol. Um, liquid NutriCalm has been awesome and cats will actually eat it because it is smoked salmon flavor. Um, so I hope that is helpful. If it is really severe, um, that's where talking with your vet about prescription medications may be needed. But often by changing diet, adding probiotics, and then giving her some things like um, tryptophan, and then if you're not using it already, uh, feel away, that can be sufficient to really get things turned around for them. And then Joe is asking about Leo, her terrier and he's got constant itching so possible allergies um, he's been on a grain-free diet the last 10 years but periodically has huge flares flare-ups um, so Joe this is where I would really think about 
doing a Glacier Peaks Holistics life stress scan test. And it's, it's a biofeedback test, so it's a bit different from, um, you know, using the allergy test that most vet's offices do. But I found it to be as good a road map as anything else. And uh, from there, you can really figure out, is it food, is it environmental stuff, and then get a, you know, kind of a, a direction to head in. And um, I'll give you the link for that test um, because it really has been a huge boon for, for many of my patients. And I've been able to help people kind of figure out what to do uh, when that, when, with the results of the test. And Jeanette was asking in the comments, is Redmond salt okay? And someone mentioned it doesn't contain enough iodine. And Jeanette, that's true, it does not contain iodine, but it is a mined salt, so it also does not contain plastic. Um, and I think April's probably chiming in to use kelp, and that's true. I would use uh, about a quarter teaspoon of kelp or seaweed in uh, each batch of food to provide iodine. Uh, so I hope that's helpful, Jeanette. Um, let's see, Rusty is asking about his dogs Boomer and Sage in Jersey. They've got uh, skin allergies, chewing on their paws. And uh, Rusty, if this is all three dogs that are having issues, my guess is that unless they're family members, you've got something in the house that's irritating them, um, like uh, mold or um, uh, you know, something in the carpet, some sort of chemical, or you've got some flea issues. So d make sure you're not having flea issues by um, uh, checking them for fleas. And then if you find fleas, then do environmental control by using things like um, fleabusters.com has uh, larvae that you can treat the yard with to kill the eggs and larvae there and then also a powder you can use inside. There's also a ton of videos on flea treatment and heartworm treatment in our YouTube channel. So if you haven't checked that out, head over there and I think you should actually be able to search for it. And then Lizette is asking about her kitty Gust that has first stage of chronic kidney disease. Um, uh, first signs being seen on ultrasound, but normal blood work, which is a little interesting to me. And then FIV, and I think, and Gus is like 10 to 15 years old. So Lizbeth, um, this is the upside of FIV is that many cats live to be, um, to be, uh, you know, ancient with FIV. And for that age, very early signs of chronic kidney disease often can be switched up by going to a cooked diet or a canned diet if you're not already feeling feeding that and then using uh, quercetin as a um, as a uh, uh, really a big home run to reduce the scarring on the kidneys so go check out our kidney health protocol in our free members area and there's a quite a bit more information there um, Let's see, and Antique is asking about Leo, who also has uh, chronic itching, and um, he's wondering about, you know, if his, if his allergies and that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, any kind of grain in the diet makes it worse, evidently, and uh, so it's really tough. Again, you know, Check out the other question, it answers I had for you on allergies there, but I think you start with a, the Glacier Peaks test and uh, that will really get you quite a bit of, of uh, help there as far as what's causing the issue. Let's see, so I think April is probably asking, and I'm sorry, this thing does um, funky stuff sometimes. Uh, let me see if I can get over to the comments here. Um, so, use kelp. Um, so the deal, the deal with about salt is that, and this really gets into fine points. So 
Um, iodized salt contains an anti-caking agents, which are typically aluminum and things of that nature. And so that's why a lot of people weren't comfortable using uh, just iod plain old iodized salt. And that's really the reason that's in the recipe is to provide adequate iodine. Now, the other sort of fine point is that um, the sea salt now actually is contaminated, all of it is contaminated with plastic. And frankly, so is kelp and uh, seaweed and things like that. Uh, actually, we saw an article not too long ago that said that we are eating the average of the size of a credit card of plastic every month because it has become so um, predominant in the environment, both in the water, not only in the sea, but also rivers, lakes, things of that nature, and in the soil. And it's just, I mean, it's in our tissues and it's in some of the smaller fish as well. So if you want to try and do the best thing, um, what I would suggest is mined salt. So Redmond's Himalayan salt, things of that nature and uh, they do not contain plastic because we're digging them up out of the ground. And then using iodine sourced either from kelp or seaweed or as a, uh, a supplement, basically, and you just kind of have to do the math to work through there. Um, and Cytopoint is, you know, it is, it's one of those things that if it works, um, it is the least of all evils, so uh, in terms of allergies goes, allergy medications, I should say. So prednisone, um, that's kind of the first thing that got used. It long term has some pretty awful side effects. Uh, cyclosporine was the next drug sort of out of the box. And um, that's where, um, you know, there are long -term, term side effects with it, but not as bad as prednisone. And then the next one was, um, oh, golly. Uh, anyway, there was another one, and then cytopoint injections. And these injections target a specific interleukin that's responsible for itching. Like everything, there are some potential downsides, and there are some pets that have had some very severe reactions. But if this keeps your pet from chewing all the hair off and scratching and things like that, um, then great, that buys you some time to get things sor uh, sourced out, if you will. And again, that's where um, I would really look into doing some sort of a, a test, the Glacier Peaks test or another allergy test to make sure what's going on. Um, and unfortunately, um, that's, that's kind of the best way to go. So Jeanette's asking about using standard process iodine. Yes, you could. Um, you, there's also tons of other iodine supplements that are available. And uh, kelp from the north isn't polluted from my understanding. Sadly, it actually is. The water, waters in the ocean circulate all over the place. And unfortunately, um, they, you know, the, the northern waters, I think, are not as polluted, but they are indeed polluted with plastics. Uh, it's really kind of pathetic what we've done to ourselves. Um, yep. And there are lots of good nutrients in kelp. Um, and the thing is, is that if you're using kelp versus iodine for the, for the iodine source, it's safe to use more. Um, more iodine than is necessary, interestingly, can actually cause uh, hyperthyroidism. And there's some discussion about that uh, being one of the causes of Hashimoto's uh, autoimmune thyroiditis. So um, I hope this is working and uh, we'll see. I don't know. I think it's time for me to go to YouTube. I keep trying to give Facebook the benefit of the doubt, but it's, it is what it is. So one other super cool thing to show you. Um, we have been, I've been unveiling all these holistic health protocols for some time. And um, this, the one I want to talk with you about today is the vaccine and heartworm prevention protocol. So if you have not signed up for the free members area, I put the link in the notes below. 
um, that's really been, uh, you know, a kind of quick way to get information about specific disease conditions. I'll be adding to them over time, over this month. If you've got more topics you'd like me to cover in specific, you know, let me know and then we'll, we'll go through that. So, um, this one is about vaccine and heartworm prevention sort of detox protocol. So this video is one I did in January, um, and it is sort of what's currently recommended as far as vaccines go. Um, I base my research on Dr. Dodds, and more importantly, she, goes, she refers back to uh, Dr. Ron Schultz's work. But this is what your pet actually needs. And the vast majority of pets, once they've had their puppy vaccinations, um, they really can get blood titers or blood tests done, both for distemper parvo vaccine for dogs and upper respiratory vaccine for cats and for rabies. And it makes it a little bit easier with the, with, with the changes that have happened in the rabies compendium. Um, and so if you read through that, and I'll find that link and put it in here for you, uh, it, it, any pet that has ever been vaccinated is considered up to date in the eyes of uh, the powers that be. And you will be asked to do a 10 day at home quarantine if your dog or cat should bite somebody. And then some states have been able to uh, get medical waivers for rabies vaccine and there's discussion in that compendium about using uh, titers in lieu of vaccinations to prove um, protection. So I'll put that link in as well. This is this information kind of goes through the whole schmeal. Um, heartworm prevention, if you live in the southeast, really is a necessity. When I, you know, and there's a lot of vets. Dr. Uh, Will Falconer and I, good friend. Um, but we do have different uh, viewpoints on vaccines. Many, many of the holistic vets on the internet say that vaccines are absolute evil incarnate. And, you know, during the conversation Will and I had, um, you know, I was asking him about, well, what about in the 40s and the 50s when distemper would roll through a town and kill every dog? And in the 70s, likewise, um, you know, when the uh, uh, parvo started showing up and roll through a town and kill, you know, 70% of the dogs there. And his response was, well, it's, you know, kind of taking out the genetically unfit ones. And let's like, that's okay, unless your dog is one of them. And if we think about the different breeds that we have today, most of them are sort of Franken dogs. Like literally, Mona is a Chawini, really a Dachshund and a Chihuahua. Uh, so, you know, she's genetically, she's actually really in awesome shape for 16. Um, but those, these are the sorts of breeds, Lhasa, Opsis, things of that nature, that are going to be more at risk without vaccine protection. And so the same thing is happening on the human side. We depend on herd health immunity for a disease not to be a massive issue within the population. But, you know, measles was almost eradicated from the United States. And now, um, because there are pockets where, um, you know, the adequate number of vaccinates are not happening, uh, we're getting measles outbreaks. And this will happen with distemper and parvo and rabies as well, periodically. Um, so, and, and somebody's asking about what, the every, what about the every three year law that they get a rabies booster. And this is what's really interesting. The compendium actually gets that a little bit. Um, and, you know, as, as the discussion goes, you have to make the best choice for your pet. And um, I think that doing titers for rabies actually will give you protection. Um, many, for instance, uh, Therapy Dogs International accepts that as proof of rabies vaccination currently. So you kind of have to feel your way through it. There are some licensing states and ordinate counties, things of that nature, that will not accept it. So you're going to have to kind of feel your way through what's what locally, you know, in your community. And make a decision based on, you know, what's best for your pet. If your pet's ever had cancer, that's a clear contraindication uh, that uh, your pet should never be vaccinated again. Uh, the immune system is not responding appropriately, and so 
vaccines can definitely whack things back out. Um, so, and I can't tell you how many patients went to another vet, got a ton of vaccinations, and then the cancer showed up and reared its ugly head within a month. So, at any rate, not innocuous, but I think they are important. Same thing with, um, with rabies. I mean, it, and other, and heart and prevention, you know, in the Southeast, you really need to use it. So um, that's, you know, I just saw way too many dogs die in practice. Other parts of the country, you may not need to as much. So I, we've got some more questions, which I'll get back to in a second, but um, also on this page. So if you need to get your pet vaccinated and for puppies, um, they, uh, there is this product called Thuja, which is a great detoxifying product that's been used by homeopathists for years as a master detoxifier, although typically it's in a much um, lower concentration. And it's, and I haven't got that screen up, so let me do that for you. Let's try that. All right, so here's this page. I've been kind of talking about it, but you couldn't actually see it. So uh, again, vaccine and heartworm prevention protocol. Here's the video. And then here's Thuja. Um, this one's for oral use. And what I typically recommend for people is that they give uh, one drop per 10 pounds of body weight twice a day uh, for five days after a vaccine. And if it's been a while or if you feel like your pet has developed some symptoms, so for instance, it's not unusual to see pets with having had rabies vaccine all of a sudden to develop some behavior changes, um, then I would use this for 21 days uh, at twice daily at that same dosing. Now with heartworm prevention, again, remember how this works uh, is by giving uh, by giving the pill, that pill goes in and kills all of the L3 and L4 larval stages that your pet has been exposed to from 30 days prior. The heartworm medicine itself is pretty much gone within 24 hours. So generally what I recommend doing is using the milk thistle starting 24 hours after you have given the heartworm prevention um, and then use that uh, for a week. We're about to get uploaded directions for use and dosing guidelines into the members area, so we'll, we'll let you know when that happens so you can get that kind of blown up um, and check that out. It's, it, that way, you, you know, if you purchase supplements from us, you, you learn how to use them appropriately and for your size pet. So. Milk, Gerald milk thistle, most of the over-the-counter stuff is around 150 milligrams. Sometimes it's 240 uh, milligrams per capsule. So for a 10-pound dog, like a half a capsule a day, uh, sorry, up to 25 pounds, half a capsule a day, and then, um, then go from there. And again, we'll get the, if you've got specific questions, just let us know. Um, so start with, tw for a 25-pound dog, a half of a 150-milligram capsule um, uh, twice daily, and then 50 pounds and more, I'd go with 150 milligrams twice a day. So that's kind of the deal. And I would use that, you know, so you're going to give that for a total of one week out of the month. It kind of helps flush your pet's liver out on a monthly basis. So I hope that helps. And then if you've got a quick question, um, you know, you can click this link here and that will um, get you the, uh, that little question answered in our next Facebook Live. And then here's some information about the coaching program if you need some additional help. So I hope that makes sense. Let me pop back over to... Interesting. Yeah, there we go. Back to me. All right, super. So there's uh, a couple of more questions to answer for you. Um, so Michael's saying that they don't even, the powers that be don't know that Raven exists. Um, you know, and that's the thing. For many licensing agencies, 
they are toothless, if you'll pardon the pun. Um, they just don't have the funding to go knock on everybody's door that isn't licensed. Um, you know, and how, how would they know and that kind of stuff. There are a few communities where that's been a problem. Now, um, what happens when a dog with adequate titer for rabies gets bit by a rabid animal? And that is a tough one. Um, so I think the way that this works currently is that, the, again, they were put into a 10-day at-home quarantine while the animal is, the, the rabid animal is being tested. And hopefully, you know, the, that animal can be captured and sadly euthanized and then tested um, for rabies. And at that point, then, the powers that be are probably going to recommend that you revaccinate. And this is not a bad thing. The, the deal with rabies is that it is not kidding. It is uh, something like 99.9% .9 fatal, and it is a pretty horrible disease. So if any of you all are old enough to remember Old Yeller, and they're talking about hydrophobia, um, that's one of the symptoms of rabies. The animal can't swallow, and so it gets freaked out about water and foams at the mouth and that sort of stuff. But it truly was a disease that was feared and many people became infected with rabies because they were bitten by wild animals or their own pets. So Old Yeller is one of those heartbreaking movies before every movie had a happy ending in Disney. So um, if you haven't seen it, check it out. It's uh, sort of a nice um, history lesson on, on how hard life used to be. So. Thuja is used specifically for vaccinations, um, and milk thistle, again, is used for, for heartworm prevention because we're trying to help the liver get rid of the drug. Um, and th there's another question about if it's gone within 24 hours, why only give it monthly? Well, this is the dirty little secret. So the, um, the deal with the heartworm life cycle is that the mosquito injects the L3 uh, phase into your pet's body. And we are using the life cycle timing in order to use these medications. So if, again, if many of you are old enough to remember the daily heartworm prevention, um, if you missed you know, two or three days, you're pretty well screwed. So this backtrack, because it only took care of the L2 and very early L3 life, life cycle stages, the larval stages. So the reason it's uh, gone in 24 hours is that it backtracks um, and kills all of, the, all of the larval forms that would have grown up during that time. So it seems kind of crazy that we only give it monthly, but it does take care of all of the larvae that will have developed in your, in your dog or cat during that month. Um, but that's why it's important if you do need it. I think even the American Heartworm Society has gone back to saying that it's probably safe to use every six weeks instead of every 30 days. Um, but in the southeast, you got to use it because we just, I saw so many dogs die of heartworm. It just was awful. Um, you know, there was one Friday afternoon when I was a young veterinarian. These two guys had walked their dog, and this is in July in South Carolina, um, walked their dog up the road in a wheelbarrow. And so I walk into the exam room. Here's the dog sitting in the wheelbarrow. And um, this is at a time when the gullet culture was still very strong on John's Island. And they looked at me and said, Doc, why my male dog pregnant? And what had happened was this dog was in severe right-sided right heart failure from the heartworm disease. So here's this poor dog sitting in the uh, wheelbarrow just panting and gasping for breath. It was really horrible. Uh, so uh, that's kind of the deal there with heartworm prevention. And yeah, milk thistle is a great way to detox your liver. Um, I generally take a higher dose and I'll use the, for me, the Gaia product just because I'm trying to get rid of more garbage. So check that out. If you go, go back to the um, uh, holistic health protocols, there's a Gaia milk thistle available in the, the liver pr support protocol. And isn't 
rabies mainly spread by bats. And in some areas, yes, that's true. Bats are the main cause. Um, and the other, uh, other organisms are generally raccoons. Um, rarely squirrels can transmit rabies. And then uh, other, other wildlife like foxes, bobcats, things of that nature, and then dogs and cats. There was a woman that um, died in South Carolina from being infected by rabies by, uh, by a bat. And there's another, one of the last human cases in the U.S. this year was a woman that was a tourist in India, reached down to pet a stray dog and was bitten, and the dog was rabid. She didn't know it. Six months later, she develops rabies and dies. So, yep, definitely go 45 days or six weeks for heartworm prevention. And I do recommend using either HeartGuard or its generics. Um, TriHeart's a pretty good one. Although it has had some recall issues, um, Iverheart's another one as well. And, and the recalls sadly were for efficacy issues. And the heartworm detox won't take away the benefits, right, because you're giving the heartworm medication and then 24 hours later, you're going to start giving the milk thistle after the heartworm pill has done its job. So I hope that makes sense. Yeah. and. Um, somebody died of, of rabies in Utah. And I'm guessing that's probably um, wildlife uh, infected or, or bats as well. You guys have some caves as well. So that's what I have for you this week. I hope that it's been helpful. Um, we'll be uh, back to uh, recorded videos for the next several weeks because uh, I'll be in a really remote part of Colorado. So that's what I know. Check it out. Um, if you've got any other questions, um, go for it. Yeah. And and Erin's saying she hasn't used heartworm prevention in Mongo or Gozer in a year, and they test clear. And I have to agree, Erin. I mean, we've been in areas where it, it, it hasn't been warm enough yet uh, for, for Mona and Pepe to be uh, exposed to it. Um, but, you know, so I haven't used heart and prevention. Actually, that's not true. We went to back to South Carolina for uh, the month of October, so I used two doses of heart and prevention there. And that brings up another good point, too. So, again, because the heart and prevention is backtracking for 30 days, so when your risk, your pet's risk of um, heartworms is over, so let's say that's in October, you actually want to give the last dose 30 days from there. So you make sure that you're catching everything. So in the end of November, hope that makes sense. And it is funny that possums don't carry rabies. And uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's a weird thing. So, you know, we'll be in really super dry climates for the rest of the year. Um, and we've seen a few mosquitoes here, but, and it has actually finally gotten up above that 55 degree mark. So I may need to consider a dose, but I think, you know, the ris risk of exposure is pretty, pretty darn slim. And over 100 in Utah in April, we're heading back to uh, Utah in September. So it'll still be hot, but a little bit cooler. So many thanks. Take good care. Um, Oh, I almost forgot one of the most important things. So for the whole month of August, if you um, go to our uh, website and store and um, buy a bottle of Holistic Total Body Support, I'm going to put a code down in the comments that when you enter that code, you can get a free jar for the cost of shipping. So for about six bucks, you get a free jar of Holistic Total Body Support for your pet. One, one jar per person. Um, we're trying to uh, get, get some folks exposed to uh, using a, a good quality supplement. And uh, that's what I got for you. Until next week, remember, your pet's best health starts in the bowl. Take good care.